Do you think we people should have a different approach to polyamory in general? Mm, That's a good question. I, I think that whatever approach works for you and your partner or partners mm. is what you should do. Okay. It, it, it's very... It, case to case. It, it could be it's different. very yeah. simple in the the logistics of it. Like, okay, this is how I feel. This is what I want. Is this how you feel and what you want? Yes. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. No. Okay. What do you want? Right. Okay. Cool. We can go from there. Alrighty, what up, you guys? I'm Bryson Smith. And I'm Javin. And, and this, this is, is etc. Et Woo! Right, anyways. Yes, we're back. Yes. Beautiful setup. We're spaced out again. Thank God we got our yeah, chairs Yeah, we got our chairs back. back. Um, but that's a whole story. But yeah, we're back with I, Nadia. And I, I, she is going to talk with us about a fantastic topic, really relevant for this month. Mm -hmm, Let's... Mm -hmm. Just get into it. What is it? Yeah, poly well, polyamory. Polyamory, um, man. <laughs> we thought it'd be interesting because yeah. these past few episodes, we've been talking about like relationships and right. stuff like that. And since what Valentine's Day is this month, and people have a lot of different views on relationships and you know people being monogamous and people being into like three people relationships and stuff right. like that. We just thought. I mean, we, there's people out there that have like five and six boyfriends and right. girlfriends and all types of fun stuff, right. which yeah. is great. It, it, yeah, do you do works, you, right? If it works, it works. You said you've experienced something like that before, though, right? Yes. You didn't go in, we didn't go in depth on it because that kind of wasn't the base of the episode. But <laughs> yes. I, I remember telling you I wanted to hear more about that. Yes. And why it didn't work out and how you think any, it, how you think one could work out. Yeah. Um. I mean, I like, think, what was your experience here? So I was in a relationship. Well, I'm gay. One, um, two. I was in a relationship with two females that actually had been in a relationship for four years prior to me. Okay. So they had been in a long term relationship, and they mm, decided, oh, kind of, sort of, in a very weird. Okay. Okay, I, I already know that this story is starting out kind of odd. <laughs> no, no, I mean, <laughs> all right. This is the Sorry. stuff we wanted. Let me before you get into it. The this we have a, a live audience and they've been frantically gesturing at me. I think you have something in your beard, Bryce, and I think oh, that's I what really? they're trying to tell me. Oh my gosh! Uh, did you get it? <laughs> she, she's got it. Yeah, they were like, Javin, Javin, Bryson's got stuff in his mouth. I'm like, I don't, what, what do you want me to no do? No one right told now? me that beforehand, though. <laughs> Just had me walking around, like, come on, people, breakfast. get on this. All right, you continue. You have to carry breakfast with you. Right. Um, okay, so let me preface this by saying that um, this all happened very suddenly. It okay. was not something that I planned, it wasn't something I expected. Matter of fact, um, I know we par spoke previously on me moving to Georgia and then moving back. Right, right? yeah, I remember that. So, when I was in Georgia, I was in a committed monogamous relationship. Right. Ended that relationship for various different reasons, mostly because I was moving back home. And then on top of that, I had been in a four-year engagement prior to right. that relationship that lasted eight months. Wow. So I remember that too, yeah. Yeah. I was in like back-to-back -back relationships and mm -hmm. I was like, uh, no, I don't. I didn't, <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. It's a lot of time. So when we got into the relationship, it literally happened in a way where me and one of the partners were literally sitting at hookah and having a great time. And she was like, mm -hmm. when are you going to let me and my partner take you on a date? And I was like, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. where okay. is this coming from? So that ended up being the like avenue in which I became a couple's girlfriend. Mm. So I think... A lot of people don't understand how much goes into a polyamorous relationship. Right. One, it could be really great. And I know a lot of people who have fantastic polyamorous relationships. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, <laughs> it's a lot. Yeah. It's a lot. I was going to say, I feel like it could be a headache. A it, it, it can because be. Because it's just more people, more think like. When you're For example, you said you're already coming into a relationship. Yeah. And I feel like when there's more people, like you're going to have duos like this person might cater more to this person yeah. over, you know, you or whatever the situation may be. So I just feel like it could be more of a headache. It definitely can be. Um, so 
how it started was unconventional. Right. And then how it ended was very like left me because I was the one that got broken up with. Oh. Yeah. So it wasn't like an equal distribution. <laughs> yeah. Kinda... So the thing is, is when you're dealing with a relationship that's already been a relationship and for so long, and then they have no real, unfortunately, they had no real prior conversation to like prepare them for that mm. venture of life. So it was like, okay, one made the decision and they had discussed it lightly before and then it happened. So it was like- They dove into it. It was like, okay, boom, 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 boom. And this all happened within the matter of like, I've known one of them for 11 years or so. Oh, wow, and that's then a while. The, the other partner, I didn't know at all. So it was, okay, I know you as like a kid. Like you right. were, and she was younger than me. So it was like, I know you from. Childhood friend, like the, your mm -hmm. life. <laughs> yeah, and on top of that, she knew my ex-fiance. They were on the same basketball team or she was on the JV team and she was on the varsity team. Mm -hmm. Um, but they went to the same school, so they knew each other. So that person knew prior history and knew quite a bit about me, That's and the other person didn't. So having to relearn somebody on top of learning a new person, mm -hmm. and then there's not that structural foundation underneath the relationship to where that venture would make sense, mm -hmm. or it would be an easy transition into it. It strained the relationship in a way that it's like, okay, Polyamorous relationships, there's a whole bunch of them. There's many different types of them. There's sure. open relationships. There's right. closed relationships where you have specific partners. There's relationships where one partner can have a separate partner that has nothing to do with the main relationship. Sometimes there is no main relationship. There's Comet so relationships where literally once in a while you just have a, a exactly. crossover and exactly. then that's that. Exactly. So yeah. it's like... There's so many different ways. And when you're having to communicate and that communication isn't happening properly, um, a lot of things can go astray. And, you know, when one partner attaches to the new girlfriend or one partner is way more attached to the old girlfriend or mm -hmm. like however it works, it can create, if you're not careful, some sort of jealousy or possessiveness yeah. or oh, I don't want you guys to hang out alone anymore without me, or I don't, you guys spend too much time together, mm -hmm. or it, it's so many different things. And when you're coming into it, like, I found out I'm a very, very greedy lover. <laughs> I am a very, very greedy lover. So I specifically found out in that time, like, yes, they're, beautiful, wonderful relationships, but also I'm more of a monogamous person. Mm. And I, I just... That's amazing that you got to <laughs> discover that for yourself, for sure, that you can be secure in that. That's Yeah, and that's it's, good... it's like in previous relationships, of course, it comes up in conversation, like, oh, yeah, everybody loves the idea of a threesome. And right. I'm like, Ugh, <laughs> females, mm, that's a lot of liquid <laughs> hands. Oh. I'm like, oh, God, what do you do? What do you do? <laughs> right, right. But every, every person I've ever known who's been in a threesome has always said that thing where it's just like, it's a lot. It's, that's yeah. a lot to take in at yeah. once. <laughs> cool, but wow, that's yeah, a lot to handle. It's a lot. I wonder what it's orgies would be the <laughs> insane. A lot to oh uh, awkward almost always. Yeah, and it, it, again, if it's if it's for you, it's right. for you, one hundred percent. But you need to lay the groundwork mm -hmm. to even have this type of relationship also there's things that you need to be able to do as a person mm -hmm. if individually you, yeah if you're not able to make more love where needed mm. it's not gonna work it's not gonna work because you run into okay well i love this person and i love this person too but i can't love this person more than i love this person or i can't love this person more than i love this person and it's like uh. oh whoa now you're in a completely different headspace when it comes to separating your time, money, mm. dates, anything. Like, yeah. anything. Gifts. Like, imagine Gifts. how much goes into a monogamous relationship. Just and then alone. doubling that or no. tripling that or making that into, full, like. That's why I was saying I feel like it'd be more of a headache with the more people because there's more you have to do. But. 
But I guess, I mean, if it works out for some people. Yeah, yeah. Right? but it's, on the flip yeah. side of that, when there is the groundwork mm. and there is that communication and there is that trust, it works well, especially for people who maybe in conventional relationships or monogamous relationships can't stay faithful. Right. Or they have a problem devoting their time and committing to just being in one situation with one person right. because maybe they have too much love to give. Mm -hmm. Maybe they don't know how to express all of that love to one person. Maybe mm. it's too much for that person. Maybe that person needs a lot of space. Maybe your careers don't line up with having a monogamous relationship. It just doesn't work that way. It's funny that you uh, mentioned that because that's actually f a fairly controversial. It, it's almost like a trigger, mm -hmm. um, that phrase, oh, I have too much love to give. A lot of people ascribe that to like uh, promiscuous people. people that's what who I can't thought too painful. when she said that. Right. Yeah. But... So do you think that's a reality for some, uh, a lot of people where it's like, it's literally the fact that they have too much love to give, or do you think there's a stigma around them? Just like, just commit, just, you don't know what you're talking about. You're just, I don't think like, they want to commit. Well, I, that's what I think. I, well, I think that everybody's idea of commitment is different. Could be that too. Yeah. Everybody's idea of commitment is different. Okay. My commitment to my girlfriend is way different than what your commitment to your girlfriend would be. Mm. The things that you do in your relationship and how you maneuver through your relationship is going to be completely different. So, yes, it does get a stigma of, oh, you're just being promiscuous. Honestly, I don't think that way. I don't think it's that. That's I don't, I, I really don't. Some people, yes, of course. Some people, yeah. There's always an asshole, right? Completely <laughs> misuse the the trust and the leeway somebody would be willing to give to you, right? Mm -hmm. However, again, when you lay the foundation and the groundwork, and you say, okay, this is the type of person I am. I like to give a lot of love. I like to flirt. I like to, you know, have multiple partners and be safe about it, right? Then yes, absolutely. This will you can probably make this work. Okay. It it just depends on the type of people that you're trying to be in a relationship with and knowing your partners and knowing yourself. So when it came to my situation, right. it was I didn't know my partners. I didn't know my partners well enough. I didn't mm. know enough about them to know how to care for them. I didn't know enough about them to love them the way that they wanted to be loved. Um, and when you're learning these things and then you figure it out and then it, something tragic happened. So there was a very tragic happening that happened in the middle of the relationship or in the very beginning of, and people don't realize like when your partner is going through a certain amount of grief and you don't know how to help them grieve, causes a rift yeah it causes you and of course both partners in that situation want to go comfort the partner that's going through something right naturally yeah. now when the partner that's been in the relationship sees the new way that mm. the new person is handling this grief and grieving with them again that can cause another rift if you don't know how to care for the other person mm -hmm. and care for them while caring for somebody who's grieving so it's a complex situation but there's a lot of communication that you can do and that's necessary to make it easier and it doesn't come off as promiscuous it doesn't come off as oh i just want to love all of these people I Every moment of the day, <laughs> right, it's right. not like that. Some people, but some people, not but common. That that also goes into the type of polyamorous relationship you're in. Okay. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have that, okay, this is what type of relationship we're gonna have. We're gonna have an open relationship. We're gonna have a closed relationship with a partner. We're gonna have a closed relationship with. You have a partner of your own and I have a partner of their own and they don't meet, but we have a main relationship right. or we're just going to be in an open relationship. We can claim each other and we love each other, but you are more than willing to go and have sex with, have dates with whoever, Whatever. but you're not allowed to be in a relationship with right. them. Romantically. Romantically. Mm -hmm. So you're not. I would. I don't want to say not allowed because that's not. That's not how humans work. <laughs> that's right. not how humans work. Right. But uh, essentially, you don't have the agreement of 
okay, we're able to be in other relationships right. other than this relationship. So when you're looking at the grand scheme of things, you actually have to do a lot of research prior to see what you're comfortable fits, with, yeah. what fits with you and have a conversation with your partner, what fits with you. Okay, this is what we're going to do. Or this is not what we're going to do right. and we're going to just make this cut and dry and we're going to we're going to leave it there. I have a question. I want, um you mentioned earlier you didn't know your partners well enough before you hopped into the relationship. Mm -hmm. Um was there something exciting about that? What you know like what caused you to just hop into that so quickly then? Absolutely. There there's a lot of because in previous relationships mm. or in my own searching for myself, I was like, I right. wonder if I would like this, if this would work for me, if this is something I want to actually do. Okay. Um, or is it just a nice, fancy idea that theoretically sounds nice, right. but in all actuality, nah, that's not it. And it ended up being that I know you as a person. I don't know you as in reference to being in a relationship. With right. You. Because people as people are very different than people as in a relationship. Right, right. The way you handle relationships is often how you handle your friendships and how you handle, you know, your relationship with your parents, mm -hmm. your siblings, if you have siblings, dogs, cats, whatever. <laughs> right, <laughs> like, got you. Whatever you got going on around you. So I didn't know them well enough in reference to, okay, this is how you are in a relationship. Now... Mind you, I'd spent time with them prior to them asking me to be their girlfriend. Right. With them as people. Because they were my friends. Right. At, at first, they were my friends. Right. Are you still friends with the one you knew over a decade? Uh, no. No? Oh, that's so yeah. that ended, it's done. Cut nah, clean. That, that's Rough. a done deal. Oh, okay. uh, That's a done deal. Uh, but, <laughs> but I do know, like... Their relationship ended up ending, and their oh okay, so it like just other relationships, and their so it all it, everything fell doing. apart. Yeah, essentially oh, okay. everything fell apart. But again, that that's from their own relationship problems and gotcha. the things that they had going on, <clears throat> and that were underlying issues that arose when it came to having another partner. Because you right. can't hide those things. You can't hide it. You can't hide if you're possessive. You can't hide if you're jealous. You can't hide. If you're envious of a person or if you love a person or if you're right. happy with a person, you're not happy with You can't hide those things, especially when somebody new comes into the situation. And especially when you're, again, the way that it ended, grieving some losing somebody. Right. So, yeah, that's a lot. Sounds that's like they, just, they weren't ready like, for like, it. That's, that's yeah. intense. Yeah. Sounds like they weren't ready for it. No, no. <laughs> I, I, and this is me looking in retrospect, Got just you. realizing like, okay, you guys just truly weren't in the space to have this type of relationship yet and ended up being that you guys weren't even in the space to have the relationship that you were having mm -hmm. so it just was a a, a long short plethora <laughs> of emotions <laughs> it, 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 density of yeah, it. <laughs> it, it it felt like a long time but in all actuality this relationship started and ended within a month Oh wow! Damn! Holy so crap! So just a lot was a in that, lot got in that thrown. Month. A lot got thrown into That's it. That's quickly. That's a lot too. of soul That's searching like... for a month. That yeah. <laughs> I don't know. So it's funny. Um, you're talking a lot about the emotional aspect of polyamory, mm -hmm. and I feel like a lot of people wouldn't immediately think of that when they talk about polyamory. Yeah. Um, you think of the fun of it. Yeah, a lot of people do. They they're like, oh, you're fucking other people. Wow, that's a trip. That's, that's a whole great. thing. Like that's like the whole exciting <laughs> part. That's about the exciting. Yeah. yeah, and and nobody really thinks about like the dates you're going on. Mm -hmm. Um, like gifts. Actually, gifts is a really good example. It's like, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna go buy a better gift for the person you've known longer and know more about? Are you gonna try to be equal? And then what if they don't give you that equality? Just that weird emotional dynamic of being committed to two people who are also committed to each other outside of you. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, do you think it's realistic for people who feel, who are excited about the fun of polyamory? Like, man, we're going to have sex and it's going to be wild. Do you think that it's realistic for them to figure out in a short amount of time how to balance that emotion? Do you think we, people should have a different approach to polyamory in general? Mm, That's a I, good question. I, I think that whatever approach 
works for you and your partner or partners mm-hmm. is what you should do. Okay. It, it, it's very... It, case to case. It, that could be it's different. very yeah. simple in the, the logistics of it. Like, okay, this is how I feel. This is what I want. Is this how you feel and what you want? Yes. Mm-hmm. No. Okay. No. Okay. What do you want? Right. Okay. Cool. We can go from there. There's it, a it's, logic to it. It's it's essentially a a, a compromise. Right. I imagine a, a relationship with multiple people, sort of like a regular one, just multiplied. Yeah, <laughs> Multiply a little time, to like. Which but, sounds super simple, but like, like a headache to me personally. <laughs> but but the difficult the difficult part about polyamory is. When it's two people, you mm. have to realize you're in three relationships. Yeah. My relationship with you, my relationship with you, our relationship that's, together. Right. That's kind of like multiple. Like It's, it's <laughs> multiple. It's a multi-layered type of relationship. But it can, it can happen beautifully. Mm-hmm. It can. When your partners get along, you get along with your partners, and everything's kind of laid out flat, and you're really honest, and you have a lot of trust mm-hmm. with it, both partners it can be really simple and really, really, really fucking beautiful. I know some some people that are in beautiful. Like I couldn't, I couldn't do that. Mm. But but they're they're happy, right? They're yeah. happy. They're happy. Both partners love each other. the The main partner loves both of them. It's great. And uh, people also don't essentially think of okay. I'm an individual. Mm. I I Nadia have a girlfriend. Okay, do me and my girlfriend want a girlfriend or does my girlfriend want Want a girlfriend? Yeah, that's hard. Or do I want two girlfriends? Well, that's (laughs) that's like, that's almost four relationships then because then there's your relationship with yourself and Mm -hmm. just trying to, that's a, that goes from two relationships, the relationship you have with yourself and the relationship with your partner and literally doubling it, even though it's just one more person. mm -hmm. Um. Right. It's kind of fucked up, but it can be, it can <laughs> it be can, pretty cool. It can be done, and it can be done properly. Um, but what you were saying, like, I, I don't mean to interrupt. Oh, no, but, you're good. Um, like you were saying, it should be simple. Open communication when you're talking to your partner. You're just like, okay, do I want this? Do we want this? But like you said before, how long can you hide the crazy bits that you didn't want to show up yeah. at the first place? How much yeah. you're like, oh, I'm jealous, but that's not like super attractive at this point. So I'm going to hide that <laughs> yeah. for a while. Like how long can you keep that down? Um, I, well, I'm naturally not a jealous person. Right. I, what's mine is mine. What's yours is yours. Greedy, not jealous. Got you. Greedy, not jealous. Right. So when it comes to me in relationships, I know that about myself. Mm-hmm. I know I'm greedy. I want your attention to myself. I don't want you to split your attention with anybody else. So for me, if I was going to do another polyamorous relationship, whether I'm not, that's a lot of work. And I just don't have the mental capacity for it at Mm -hmm. this juncture and point in my life. Um, But I would have another girlfriend that isn't connected to my girlfriend and my girlfriend would probably have another girlfriend that isn't right. connected to me mm. and we would keep the relationship separate is probably how I would want it to go. Mm. If we were going to have a relationship where somebody is involved directly with the both of us or like living with us or, you know, we're constantly in the move with each other, she would probably only be with us together right. and not separately. Right. So, it, okay. it just kind of goes in this way of like, okay, what can I truly mm. like digest, handle, be okay with, love both people as much as I can love them and make this a healthy relationship. So it, yeah, it does take a lot of like. Sounds like a lot of work. It, it, it's dead set commitment. It's like, I am committed to this thing. It's going to happen. It's going to work well. This is what I want to do. And you have to go into it with that mindset. Which is entirely ironic considering the stigma around polyamory where it's just like, oh, no commitment. Just free. Just do whatever you want. It's a huge commitment. It is a huge commitment. It takes time and effort. Right. I always. And a whole lot more. Not to to mention, yes, sex does come into the category. You have to be sexually compatible with these people Mm. too. Mm -hmm. So you have to find them attractive or you have to find some attractive quality about them and feel attracted by both of them exactly so what if 
one of your partners isn't as attracted to you as the other one. Now mm-hmm. you're going to spend more time with the one that you're more attracted to or the person is more attracted to you. Right. And then that's when things get a little... Soupy and not uh, amazing. What were you saying, I was going to say, I always... To no, when I always have these conversations, I always think of Sham Booty because she mm-hmm. always says, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's a lot of work, this, that, and the third. And, you know, I'm not... I've never been in a relationship like that, but she, every time I hear information about this, I always go to her or something. Yeah, right. I love She's Shan. popular. Though. She's great. I love, I love Shan. Shan is, yeah. Shan is definitely a good person to go to if you are she's, thinking about doing this she's super educated on it too. Yes, like yes so it's it's this whole world it, mm-hmm. it's a, a completely different world and it's it really is you have to you have to take care of it but just like any other relationship it's it's not more complicated than any other relationship that you've ever been in i promise you because essentially it if it's going to happen, it's going to happen naturally. Mm-hmm. And it's going to happen in a way that if you communicate properly, this should be, okay, cool. This, yeah. I feel like it's not that is, easy, though. It's never that this easy. It sounds <laughs> easy like, to say it, but when you get paper, emotions involved and all this other stuff, yeah, like what we've been going over. That's, wild. That's, yeah. when, that's when knowing your partners comes into play. That's when. And yourself, mm, right? Mm, Definitely knowing yourself. Right. So if I'm super solid in who I am and you're not super solid in who you right, are, yeah. that's just going to cause a personal riff mm-hmm. because at the end of it, you, you essentially want your relationships to be, Oh, these are my friends. These are at right. the base of everything. These, they're still my friend, girlfriend, boyfriend relationship, mm-hmm. friend. Cool. Got it. After that. Yeah. You, you really got to know what you're getting yourself into. You really got to know your partners and you really got to know, hey, this is solid what I want to do. And this is how I want to live my life. This is a lifestyle I want to have. And you honestly have to not give a fuck about anybody else's opinion. I'm already there. So like (laughs) parents, aunts, uncles, close family, friends, relatives, like it's like. You got to throw all that out the window. You really have to be like super solid and you have to be like, yo, I'm ready for this. Mm -hmm. I'm ready. I want this. This is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to do it. This is how I'm going to find my partners. This is how I'm going to do it with my girlfriend or my boyfriend or whoever. And then also you get to the topic of marriage. I was oh, literally, man. you read my mind. I was actually just about to ask you, we're, do we're you think it should too. be? <laughs> can, we, can we answer that? Right. Quick? Yes or no I question. Like do you think it should be legal for you to marry as many people as you want? Within some parameter of like to test its veracity, to make sure it's legitimate, all that. But once all that's done with, do you think it should be allowed for people? That's a layered question. Like, <laughs> yes or no. Can you, I feel like you can't just say yes or no, though. OK, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yes or no. Yes. There. Yes. Because just like me being a gay person, I want the right to have a marriage and it be recognized and me reap the benefits of marriage. Right. Because it's essentially a business. Uh, it's, a right. business, it's, a business, yeah. it's a business partnership essentially because you're you're putting on paper taxes and health Shared insurance ventures, and yeah. all those all of those things bank accounts all all types of fun stuff. But yes, if that is the relationship and the lifestyle that you are committed to, you should be able to commit yourself to both people or all people within the legalities and parameters. Right. In given. the eyes of the government, you should be recognized as you a, should. You okay. should. There's there's polyamorous relationships that they have a girlfriend that's their permanent fiance and they look at it as a right. marriage and things like that but that's so whole okay. different it's a minefield <laughs> right. we, we can't get into it but um, yeah go for it yeah I was gonna say that that would wrap us up <laughs> yeah, um we'll probably have to talk about uh, we'll I almost uh, yeah undoubtedly more, we yeah. we're gonna have to talk because we're just talking about polyamory which I don't know if you guys know, but it means like many loves or multiple loves. Mm-hmm. Right, right. We haven't even gotten to the full sexuality of it. We haven't gotten all the way into the social stigma of it. There's a lot on this topic, um, but I'm really glad you came on yeah, and got too. to always. talk thank about you. it. Always, thank you, always, thank you. Always, always. So, um, Fantastic. See you next time. See you yeah. next time.